Let's draw the orbital overlap diagram for carbon monoxide. Can you draw the Lewis structure for it? Well, carbon brings four valence electrons, oxygen brings six. So you're gonna need 10 valence electrons between these two. The way that I always draw my Lewis structures is to connect the two atoms with a single bond first, that's two electrons. Then I fill the octets of the outer atoms. I'm gonna to choose to fill the oxygens. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the rest of the electrons get dumped on the center atom. Okay, but this carbon violates the octet rule. So I'm gonna move this lone pair of electrons into a double bond that gives six electrons around the carbon, still violates the octet rule. I'm gonna move another pair in. So after all that work, I realized that carbon and oxygen are triple bonded to each other. Now, the reason I had to draw that is I have to figure out what the hybridization of each of these atoms are. Now, the way that I figure that out is to identify how many pi bonds are attached to each atom. And I set aside p orbitals corresponding to each of those pi bonds. A triple bond is, by definition, one sigma the first bond between any two atoms is always sigma. And then the second and third are pi bonds. We're in luck that carbon and oxygen both have two pi bonds attached to it. So they're the same hybridization. Two pi bonds require one, two p orbitals to be used up or like set aside and not hybridized. Therefore, the hybridization of the carbon and oxygen is sp1 and 2 for the pi bonds. It's sp hybridized. Okay, great. Now, what that means is that carbon has two sp orbitals and two 2p two orbitals. Oxygen actually has the same. I'm going to draw them here. I should not be drawing them at the same height, but this is just a rough sketch to help you see what's going on, right? You're going to have to draw a carbon and an oxygen. I'll start. Carbon, oxygen. Each of them has two sp hybridized orbitals. What do sp hybridized orbitals look like? Well, they come out in a linear arrangement from the atoms. One, two hybridized orbitals. That's, what, that's the shape of them. That's what they look like. Um... You'll just have to memorize those, I think. SP3 is trigonal planar, and then S, sorry, SP2 is trigonal planar, and then SP3 is tetrahedral. Here's my SP hybridized orbitals. One of them has a lone pair in it for each of them, and then there's a sigma bond made between them. That's what the hybridized orbitals are for. Then your question is, well, what about the two Ps? That's what helps make the double and triple bond. What I want you to do to represent those is I want one of these peanut things, barbells, whatever your teacher calls them, coming up and down from the carbon. That's actually a single 2p orbital. That's an sp. That's another sp. This is a single 2p. And then I want one from the oxygen as well. The sideways overlap of these two is what gives you one of the pi bonds. And I know it's weird you drew one, two lines, but because these have two lobes each, they like fold over each other. And there's two regions of space where those electrons could be. And then we need the, the, the third bond between carbon and oxygen. Now, I've specifically chosen the x-axis for my hybridized orbitals and the y-axis for my first 2p unhybridized orbital. We need to try to make this look three-dimensional for the other 2p. And so I'm going to draw it diagonally here and diagonally here so it looks like there's a little bit of perspective, like how this marker is coming out at you. And then we draw the same thing in the same arrangement from the oxygen. That's another one of the 2p orbitals. In fact, I'll highlight that for you. Those are the pinks. Those are the greens. And then these are both orange. I guess I could have been more careful about that, but that's okay. And then there's a side-by-side -side overlap here, like front to back. 
cool. Point here is that you've got two hybridized orbitals, sp orbitals, that are arranged linearly. Then you've got a sideways overlap for one pair of 2p orbitals. And then you've got another side-by-side -side overlap, but on a different axis for the other 2p orbitals. If you're being asked for the orbital overlap diagram of carbon monoxide, this is almost exactly what you're being asked for. Some teachers will have you write how each of the pi bonds is being made. Like this here is carbons 2p, I don't know, y, and oxygens 2py. This sigma bond here is carbon's sp hybridized orbital and oxygen's sp orbital. And then the pink ones are, well, I should say, the pink pi bond is carbon's 2pz orbital with oxygen's 2pz orbital. Cool. Hope I didn't belabor that too much. I'm just making sure you understand how the Lewis structure gives you the pi bonds and hybridization, how the hybridization leads you to the shape of the molecule and the shape of the overlap of the orbitals. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.